Hey friends, in our quest to build a perfect course, I'm trying something new this semester. What I'm gonna do is create a series of short videos that capture little drills so that after every day of class, when you've just been inundated with all these new techniques, when you come into practice and work on your project later that night, you've got a short video that you can just go through several times to start to build that muscle memory. So let's go through the stuff we had here on the first day. So the first things that you're gonna see are the best working position. We talked about that in class, how getting that left thumb and putting it on the left command key is gonna set you up to be able to easily do so many of the shortcuts that we'll do all the time. So so take that left thumb, put it on the left command key, and never move it again. Remember, that's the secret. So the first thing we started to do with it was we held the command key down and we tapped the tab key. That let us switch between different open applications. You can see right now, I only have open things like Chrome, the software I use to record, and text edit. Now, when we want to launch something, we jump to Spotlight. So command spacebar. I'll typically use two thumbs for that. Command spacebar will launch Spotlight. Go ahead and practice that seven or eight times. Spotlight will bring it up and close it down. And then, sometimes we want to launch something from that. I'm going to start to type Pro Tools, and as soon as it comes up, I'm going to hit Return. Pro Tools will start to launch. Let's use Spotlight again for something else. Finding files. So again, spotlight is command, spacebar. So we're gonna bring this up several times. You'll notice mine has a little bit different look than yours because I'm using what's called a spotlight alternative. It's a piece of software called Alfred, but it basically does the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and type Pro Tools again. And as I get here, if I wanted to find it, you hold down what? Hold down the command key, then hit return. So that would actually take us to it. Let's close this window out right now. And uh, just in case you haven't noticed, you're gonna see these shortcuts that I'm using at the bottom of the screen. So you should be able to see them right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and close that window out. If we close it, it's command W. So what I need to find is our zip file like we did in class. So I'm gonna use spotlight, command space bar, and then let's search for the zip file, 2050 dash Try that one more time. Sp command spacebar 2050-exercise1.zip. Again, to find it, hold down the command key, then hit return. It's gonna take us right to it. I'm gonna copy this, and then I'm gonna jump over here to the external hard drive and paste it in. So now I've got my exercise1.zip there. So ready to go. So that's starting to feel pretty good. So we've got Spotlight. Now for determining the active application, we looked in the upper left-hand corner. So right now, text edit is the active application. If I were to command tab over to Pro Tools, Pro Tools is the active application. Okay, so we're starting to get that figured out. Determining the active application, right now we see it's Pro Tools. If I were to switch over to something like Chrome, we see that now it's Chrome, even though there's no Chrome windows on the screen. Moving past that, if we jump over to our finder where we had this file available, I'm gonna put it over here on the side of my screen. I'm using a little piece of software to do that. Uh, but the file menu, we've already looked. We examined these shortcuts and modifiers, Command N, Shift Command N, uh, Control Command N, and then we found the shortcut right here for um, Option Command. So we can see that that's actually an optional symbol as well. So I zoom in on that. All right, so we've started to look at those shortcuts and modifiers. We also looked briefly at the difference between Icon View detail view, which is, allows us to sort things by name, by date modified, and by size, and column view, which is useful as well. We really just don't use icon view. Back over here to our little uh, shortcut, I'm gonna go ahead and let's open the zip file. Open would of course be command O, right. Typically when you hear me stress the first letter of a word, it's gonna be command and that letter. So command O is gonna open this zip file. So we've opened that file as well. So we most of us know how to go ahead and navigate in here, but I just wanna show you again that this is what includes uh, both the exercise file and the audio files. So the audio files here in an audio files folder right next to it. So that's uh, what it takes to make a whole Pro Tools session. In your Linda videos, you learned about the wave cache file, uh, the fact that Pro Tools should, or it has an option to turn on automatic backup, so it makes copies of your file in here, and we've got a little mix template that we'll be using later in this project at the very end um, to be able to work with that. So all of those things make up a Pro Tools file, a Pro Tools session and the audio files, and they both have to be inside a folder. All right, having gone through all of that, let's go ahead and practice some of these other things. Uh, we know how to copy and paste. Most people already know how to do those things. We've looked at what makes a working Pro Tools session, uh, but we do need to be able to rename these files. So in the instructions, it asked us to rename them, and we use the return key for that. So when we hit the return key and we have a file selected, it's going to allow us to rename it. So I'm gonna rename mine real quick, 2050-lastname-firstname-exercise1. I believe in the, on the instructions, you're supposed to type dash edit as well. Let me show you a quick tip for making these two names match. 
I'm gonna make sure this is selected that I've already renamed, hit the return key to put it into rename mode, and you'll notice all the text is selected. I'm gonna copy that, Command C, and hit return again. Now I'm gonna use my arrow keys to move down to the one I want to rename. And when we started the project, it said this one needed to be duplicated. Since we know open is Command O, copy is Command C, duplicate is logically, Command D, right, so Command D would duplicate. Now I have a safety copy of my exercise file, and then I can take that one. I'm just gonna hit return again and paste. Paste is Command V, right, not Command P. So now I have both my session and my folder named the same thing, and I'll always be able to find them on a hard drive. I tend to stick these little uh, backup exercise files, kind of my, my safety copy. I'm gonna put those in the session file backups folder. That way I never have more than one that looks like this is something I need to be loading. So let's go ahead and open that up. Open, of course, would be command. Oh, you got it. So it's gonna open up here in Pro Tools and we have the session as we started out last time in class. All right, the last things that we looked at were how to begin navigating our way around a Pro Tools session. So the first thing we looked at was using horizontal zoom using the command left and right brackets to the right of the P key. So if I command tab back over to Pro Tools, command hold down the command key and hit the left bracket to zoom out horizontally, command the right bracket to zoom in horizontally. Let's practice that several times. Command left bracket a bunch of times, Command right bracket a bunch of times to zoom in. Now it's always gonna zoom to wherever this playhead is. So if I wanna go to this word, I can select here and zoom in on it. If I wanna zoom back out and go to a different part, I can click over here and zoom in, zoom out. If I hit the return key, I will return to the beginning of this song. If I hit the space bar, it will toggle playback starting and playback stopping. So both of those things are great. Now, when I want to zoom out horizontally so everything fits, it's Alt-A. So Alt-A is gonna zoom me out. So even if I'm zoomed in super far, super far, Alt-A zooms me out. If I'm zoomed out super far, Alt-A zooms me back in so that the whole song fits on the session. Now for vertical zoom, we initially used bear claw. So that was the control, alt, and command keys, and then up or down arrows. So when I hit either one of those, you'll notice it automatically resizes all the tracks. So bear claw and the up or down arrow key on my keyboard. Now that made them all fit, but if I lift off the command key, now I can control, alt, up, arrow. Oops, I've got a piece of software running that's actually stopping that. But this is a drill, we're not gonna edit. So control, alt, up arrow key, will make your tracks taller, control alt and the down arrow key makes your tracks smaller. Control alt up arrow, taller, control alt down arrow, smaller. Again, bear claw and the down arrow is gonna fit them vertically, alt A. So let's practice that one more time, quick zoom in, command right bracket, way zoomed in, alt A. Bear claw, up or down is locks them in. If I lift up that command key, so it's control alt, up arrow makes them taller, bear claw down. All right, that's your drills for the day. We'll see you next class.